Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard, on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block, get that hitter. I've all long had a theory that that they should it should be documented yeah. on humans if you are a C-section baby, if you were given birth a C-section breach, doggy style, yeah. however you were conceived as well should be documented because I feel like that goes in a lot of like how you are formed. For sure. If you're a missionary baby, you know, what are you? You know, you got a lot of work to do. If you're doggy style baby. Oh, you're talking about conception. Conception. So conception matters too, like how the sperm gets in there. Yeah. So sperm's upside down. Yeah, if the sperm, I mean, it's like if the sperm is, you know, it's been a wild night or if the sperm has just been like kind of a calm afternoon, you know, it just depends on what's, I feel like that that could, it could determine who you are a little bit. Absolutely. I like your C-section theory. You do? Yeah, just because someone said like the reason childbirth is so painful is because um, you're, the woman needs to go through that to love the kid. Yeah. And maybe when you get numbed up or when you get the C-section, you just don't have that attachment. I could see that. You know, like what you got, you got to go through the gauntlet. You got to suffer and then you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that show. Remember that show that had those people with steroids at the end of it? <laughs> uh, Gladiator. Yeah. American, American Gladiators. Gladiator. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Like what if you just won the show at the beginning? You know? Yeah. It sucks. Like, uh, you don't even care. Yeah. I like that one where they had the tennis ball gun. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, you tried oh, to shoot God. the thing. That was sick. That was the only, <laughs> but the rest of it was just bullshit, dude. Yeah. It well, was just yeah. like, you know whatever andrew schultz is here i'm here man what's up man nice to meet you have we ever even met no i think i've seen you in new york i think i saw you in new york kind of you were hanging out maybe came by the the village lantern yeah but i never we never i think officially met though i have a funny story i think you had butt sex with my friend whoa yeah and it's a woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's start um, that there at least. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay was her name, and you guys met at spring break. This is back MTV days. Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, from Buffalo. Huh. And this is what she said. I don't remember. <laughs> Starting with heat. So this is what she said. <laughs> this would be interesting, bro. <laughs> Take a sip of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> so she goes, because I was like, oh, I'm going to, you posted or I posted I was going to come out here and do this. And she right. was like, this is totally did random. Did you send me a picture of her? Yes. I'll say, no, did I? I don't remember. No, I didn't send you any picture. I okay. wanted to surprise you. And uh, so I said, okay, boom, we'll talk about it when we go on a podcast. So she goes, yeah, like we met at the spring break thing. I think you were hosting it for I spring I met her TV. at Young Break? Yeah. Uh, spring break, okay. Spring break. And um, I think you guys had a wild night or something like that, maybe some butt sex in a shower. She's not totally sure. She thinks it was butt sex, but it was, know, it was man. a wild night. I've only ever had butt sex one time so when maybe, I was a youth. Yeah. And this was how, that's how I lost my virginity. Was butt sex. Yeah. By yeah. a bowling alley. Actually, Tiffany Lane's bowling alley on Highway 190, and it's still open. Shouts to <laughs> Tiffany Lane's. Oh, That's dude. a plug. Picking up splits out back. Hey! You know? <laughs> and, uh, and people were throwing rocks at us while I was having While you were butt fucking? Yeah. That's fucking I mean, while I was having clarity. sex at all. Can we not okay. use the term butt fucking? Oh, sorry. Much? I apologize. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so, but, yeah, butt loving. What would, how do you want yeah, to Yeah, just having it? sex and who knows where we were. Right, right, know? right. Or, or where it went. Yeah, like hitchhiking. In, inside Anything. of each other's bodies exactly yeah. 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 i mean it starts with the thumb yeah i mean i don't remember we were young but kids were throwing rocks at us it was very middle eastern yeah maybe because you, know? you were in the wrong hole i, mean, I don't know <laughs> they, trying to help they you couldn't out. have known from that far away you never well know. maybe they could have yeah but i do remember people throwing rocks and it's hard to keep an erection while, while, while people are throwing rocks sure I sure that. and i yeah. remember being kind of proud of myself because you did it yeah, just feeling like, oh, man. Well, so much had happened at once. Yeah. You know, I'd yeah. like uh, overcome these bully kids, and I'd also had sex. You know why you were able to do that? Uh-uh. Natural birth. Yeah. None of that C-section uh -uh. nonsense, bro. Oh, somebody You're crawling out? Strong. Yeah. You're strong. Somebody crawling out of their <laughs> freaking... Dude, you get to look around, decide if you want to come out or not? No. <laughs> I'm the old-fashioned way. You had to get, you had to come out of your mother's vagina, man, mm -hmm. like a real champ, pushing, like a G, head first. What was? Tell me more about Lindsay. Though. So she Lindsay, like a nice girl. She's the coolest man. She's yeah. cool as hell. She said you were cool. She said uh, one time you went to go like visit her up in Buffalo or something oh, wow. like that. Oh wait, 
Now I think I remember this girl. Blonde hair, short. Yes, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Nice yeah, little dumper. Nice girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great wow. girl, cool. And yeah, uh, she did seem like a cool girl. I said, tell me a funny story about yeah, the other I, I can bring this. up on the podcast. And she's like, well, one time we were having sex, and then um, we uh, we were having sex for a little while, and then oh yeah, he, a little uh, while. Little you while, heard that right? A lot of naysayers out there. There we go, including little while myself up in there. And uh, and then you came, and then you just said, "Game over." Oh wow. That's pretty cool, man. I thought that was a great way to come. <laughs> I've yeah, never, I've never audibly good, come man. before. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> but <love> game over? <laughs> I thought that's some legendary shit. <laughs> it sounds fun, man. Because usually it's just like, ugh. But you were yeah. like, game over. Yeah. I wish you had some drawings of it or something. It sounds like it was a hoot. <laughs> that's what I wish, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, tell her I said so hey whenever you talk to her. Yeah, tell her I said what's up. Absolutely. Um, oh, she'll watch. And Lindsay, all, I hope I did justice to the story, which was my camp. Yeah, go. and I'm glad that we met each other, Lindsay. You seem like a nice person. And also, I'm going to say this. The first time I ever saw you, I think, was at Village Lantern. Yes. And you had performed. I'd never ever, I'd never heard of you or seen you, which, you know, is always a weird thing to tell another comedian, but totally good. You know, I don't mean that in any weird way, but, Not at all. I, you know, I, I didn't know hardly anybody from New York. Mm -hmm. You know, the only people I even knew from New York were like Schumer, Chris Rock, right. um, you know, Big Jay Okerson, because I'd see him out here a good bit. But I was like, and I had to go next, and I was like, fuck no, what is that guy doing? Like, <laughs> I do not, I don't know if everything's okay. I was asking people, like, how, like, weird questions were coming out of me, like, how long has this building been a structure? You know, like, <laughs> shit that was, like, just fucking, like, survival pieces of things were coming out of me, man. Oh, that's good. It was interesting, man. You crushed, bro. You crushed, and it was... And yeah, I just all my confidence had, had just had, had was suddenly on roller skates inside of me, and it just felt uncertain. You oh, know? good. So, but yeah, so yeah, man, you certainly have that effect where you you know you just have that power up there, you know. God, man, thank um, you so much. Have you always did you always kind of have that whenever you started doing stand up? No. Or what, like, how has that kind of changed? I think that, I think that like, I think I I maybe had presence obviously before jokes. Right. You know, I think you get, it's one or the other. Some people have jokes first, but they have no presence. And then some people have presence and then no jokes. So I had like, I think I had presence, but the jokes just weren't there in the beginning. You know, the dumb ideas you come up with as, and, uh, as a young comic. And then, um, I think I started to get some jokes and then like for like a year, I just sat down and people thought it was like an arrogant thing. But I was just trying to not sell the joke. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because when yeah, when I see me, it seemed like a machine gun kind of, you know. Yeah. And I used to always be like that, and I can still be like that sometimes. And when I when I get going, I'm going on a thing. It's almost like on a little roller coaster. Yeah. It's like this is going to be the ride, and yeah. it works best if you just kind of let me take us on it. Exactly. And we're in your world. Yeah. You're in my world. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, but like those couple of years or like that year where I just sat and told the joke is like I really found out where the funny was in the jokes. Like I found out how to use silence and like build tension and like mm. break it and it, it you know it was also kind of humbling but it was one of those things like it just taught me a lot about like the art like what i thought maybe needed energy early on because that's what i think we compensate with early is energy yeah. right you can see a lot of guys east coast and west coast both do it. it's like i'm gonna be big yes because i don't know where the punchline is but if i'm big they see something happening and they'll kind of chuckle yeah and then as i got really small i like learned where the funny was in bits mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. So that's interesting. And I'm sure it probably just gets even more and more interesting the longer you do it now. <sighs> man, it's just so much like the more I think of this shit, like it's just bullfighting. Yeah. You know? Like for me, it's like I just want to get as close as I can to the bull. Oh, right on. Right? Like, yeah, you seem like you got that more of that risque in you. Yeah, just that's what excites me about it. It's like, like you really want to be a stripper. Yes. But you're just not telling anybody. You know, kind of in a <laughs> but I don't want to. This is what I want to do. I don't want to strip my clothes off. Yeah, I want to strip the audiences. Yeah, does that make I sense? Like that. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, I want, I want to like attack an idea that you think you're a hundred percent concrete on. Yeah. And then I want to like strip your belief in that idea. Like you're a hundred percent, you believe in it. You know, like, the, the MAGA hat is awful. And I'll be like, oh, what about, like, a Viking hat? Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, I guess the Viking hat point. doesn't stand for that good shit. Right? It's like, mm -hmm. I just want to shake, I want to shake the ground a little bit. And I think yeah, that's... Yeah, or a Jets helmet. 
I don't know where are we going with that. No, just like <laughs> we're talking about bad fucking headwear. Oh, I was talking about like you know represents like oh raping yeah people. yeah that's yeah, true yeah yeah that's yeah, true yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think the Jets had that no um, maybe Namath yeah maybe huh yeah, yeah, yeah. Favre. Yeah. Sent, pi- sent pictures when he was on the Jets. That's, That's true. Huh? Vikings too. And, and he that- was a Viking. Where do you think he learned how to do that? <laughs> Point, huh? Minnesota. Not Boom. Wisconsin. Yeah. So, But it's just one of those things where it's like, and I'm sure you have this as a comic as well. It's just like, the second you tell me something is one way, I can't accept that. Like, to me, the world is things, things aren't black or white. Things are both. Right. Right. Something is and isn't. We'll see. Yeah, Not that's is or isn't. I like or the, and and are different. Right. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of the bit that I heard you talking about that I was just like, man, this is fucking baffling. That this he's is taking recent? this on. This was like a probably a, a year ago, year and a half ago. The women food bit? Mm, nuh-uh. Yeah, and I don't want to go through all your bits, man, and make it <laughs> weird. People often reference that one. The joke is just about how like... Uh, like Gender inequality isn't all bad because the women from the most oppressed countries got the best food. Right. Oh, I say, look, places with a lot of racism got good food. Oppression. You need oppression for content. Dude, you need oppression to get water to boil. Facts. <laughs> Facts. You know what I'm saying? It's true. Like, like if you look at like, Ir- like Ireland, there's like three million people from Ireland. Yeah. And I was like, why the fuck is all this great literature, poetry, music? Like, why does it come from this one little place? And it's just because they were there was one tiny little peephole for art. Wow. Right? It was like, you can't express your feelings any other way Except besides art. singing. Yeah. That's it. So Bono was like, all right, I got this. Like, if Bono grew up in, like, America, he wouldn't be special. He'd be some douchebag with glasses. Yeah. But Ireland, it's like, fine, I'll sing about it. Yeah. I gotta get it out of me. I get, that's the only way I can. Mm. It's the birth shit. Yeah. Right? It's that canal. It's, it's like he you didn't get go C-section. Small you gotta go through the small hole. There's a lot of C-section artists out there now. They're artists with yeah, them? really. I mean, there's a lot of C-section artists out here nowadays. Oh, it's like I thought you meant like the way they cut the belly for the baby to come out is an art. Oh no, you mean like Soros <laughs> in there? Oh, definitely. I came out of circle. Oh yeah, yeah. What'd you come out of? Oh, I came out of an octagon. But you're right, C-section artists. Mm-hmm. Is a lot of art being produced by people who? Oh, this fits here. Let's piece this together. Oh, let's cut this person right out of here and let's fit them in. That's interesting, man. It's not yeah, organic. And a lot of people have to go through the canal. Yeah, it's mm. not organic. It's like adversity introduces you to yourself. You know, it's like the, oftentimes like the worst thing that happens in your career is the best thing that happens in your career. Yeah. At least that's how I feel. Well, I've noticed the worst thing that's happened in your life for me turn around to be the things that have given me ammunition to make any real art for myself. Because you have perspective. You know? Yeah, I think, I don't know what it is. I think some of them just have to go through a time where they feel a certain way inside of you and then you have to get them out you yeah. know um buddy of mine had a uh, friend of it had, had died of cancer oh really yeah and uh i thought you're gonna say aids honestly no not aids not aids but i'm sure he's had friends who died of aids yeah but um but in new york specifically no this he was from detroit and my buddy's from atlanta but uh, or jacksonville and uh but uh, he was like the cancer is a gift and i was like why and he goes because it's god going hey wrap things up Mm. like if you and i just die we don't have wrap things up it's like god giving you three to five years to go live this shit right because you might not have lived it if you lived until 90 right like i'll figure that out yeah yeah and like and he's aware of it he goes this is my perspective you get to choose your perspective on every little thing like you've chosen the perspective of all that fuck shit i went through yeah has made me this guy who's able to turn ideas into comedy and have a career on it. Yeah. So you found joy in the fucked up things you went through. That's just perspective. Some people do that exact same thing and then they kill themselves. Right. It's interesting, man, that um that's such an that's such a fascinating way to look at that's such a great perspective on having cancer. Like, you know, on having something terminal. It's like that you actually get gift. Yeah. That you, gift. To look at it as a gift. Because in the end, the only, that's really the Otherwise, you just it's the other way where it's like you're just fuck. I'm no one dying. knows when they're gonna die, so they don't live. Yeah, right. They're not like I gotta get this done. Yeah. And the second you got a timer, it's like oh shit, maybe shit. I should go to Greece. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should do that snorkeling. That's you know? what they did for the maybe last. Maybe I should week. eat this jar of olives I've had. 
You Maybe know? I should yeah. butt fuck one of Andrew's friends. Whoa, whoa, dude. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, do you not curse? Is this not the cursing huh? podcast? No, we can curse. We don't say butt fucking here, though. <laughs> We're not that crazy, man. You know? I mean, we'll say like b hole. <laughs> b hole. Okay. Um, so, dude, I'll, I'll say this. So, this is just when I remember hearing our, when I first, I was like, how is this guy not? How does how do I not know about this guy, right? That's yeah. what I remember hearing about you when I saw you. And they're like, oh, well, this is what I heard. The industry doesn't really pick him up because he's he has like ant somebody what it's and this is just some i have no clue this yeah, was yeah, sure, sure. they they oh he's anti or he has too many jokes that are too masculine or too hmm. he's not like you know it was like not supportive of feminine or something right. like that yeah. right that's what i heard did you ever feel that or was that a real thing or is that just something some fucktards told me you know um i think that that was maybe the sentiment we do say fucktard yeah you hit that fucktard <laughs> yeah right dude there. well i needed it was it. powerful <laughs> well i had to fucking you said been saying what you've been saying i had to freaking, boogie yeah yeah, yeah. it's on well, like that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do some b-hole boogie bro and we're trying to stay off i'm about 80 days off pornography right now 80 yeah so me just saying butt fuck has got you feeling away i mean it's definitely got my eyes wet you know <laughs> a little more damp than they were earlier this morning <laughs> my eyes wet it does man <laughs> okay so uh, it makes my neck feel warm oh you're really going through it yeah yeah well i'm just trying to stay out of that so i'm trying to just stay in the conversation and just you know know where i am and just yeah. keep my feet on the ground yeah dude that sex is going to be amazing well, we'll see, but also not being on pornography is great. Something must be dead in here. There's definitely more gnats than there were before. Um, but yeah, did you ever feel that? Like, did you feel like the industry wouldn't give you a shot? Because I'm like, well, How is, this dude is a straight killer. Yeah, they, they, so you're making your own shot. I had to, but like, uh, yeah, yeah. I've never done stand up on TV. I've auditioned for everything, and uh, yeah, same here. You got it. Yeah, you. No, no. Meaning like you understand it. Yeah, yeah. and it's. Um, I mean, there's a. We can get into like a couple different reasons why that is. There is incompetence on the uh, the people that are like choosing folks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, like, if they don't see something in you, you have to also look at that as a compliment because they didn't see something in Burr. They didn't see something in a lot of these people that are doing. Yeah. Like, Burr got his special, you know what I mean? But, like, the fact that Sebastian hasn't had a sitcom, he gets a deal every year. Right. He has m millions of fans, but you can't make a show around that. Yeah. Like, buddy, it's not that hard right the work is done yeah you don't have to introduce this guy yeah he's introduced give him a kitchen and a living room yeah it's over yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like he has the act kitchen living room where's ray romano's house mm -hmm. put him in right yeah put him in there where's who's the boss huh who's the new boss that's is that, it. How's that not a fucking show huh? that's the show yeah so so what happened with me is i realized that um i filmed my own special and i was like i'll just do it myself and, mm -hmm. I, and i'll go sell it and i did uh I did five different comedy clubs in one night, and I did the the uh, car rides, taxi rides yep. in between, and like I was like, "This is New York," because yes. I figured you're not going to pick it up because you have something against me. So I'll increase the artistic quality around it, and like if you care about the art of stand up, you'll want to show this experience, you know. And um, I pitched it to everybody, and uh, everybody said no, literally mm -hmm. everybody. Like the networks that I was going to say no to. <laughs> said no like that is yeah. humbling you know right. what I mean like, like the 7-Eleven app we're like bro, nah we don't need you know CISO right oh god CISO see you with your fucking art that, was, that, Yo. that place got a bunch of people's art and then went out of business and held on to it facts yeah Fucked so they up. can sell it elsewhere so they can sell it what elsewhere. a fucking shithole so basically I, I, I go it was the lowest point in my career where I'm like am I not good at this like what's going on what's happening like yeah and um, I said fuck it I'm going to put it out myself. But if I'm going to put it out myself, I got to understand comedy a little bit better. I got to understand like the what's going on and how people watch it. And I started asking, you can learn so much about comedy from asking your non-comic friends about it. And I kept asking my non-comic friends, I'd be like, are hey, you watching any stand-up? Who are you watching? Like, who are these names? And they'd be like, yeah, you know, I watched, you know, Mulaney or, or all these different guys. And they'd be like, yeah, it was so funny. And then they'd always say, uh, yeah, but I didn't finish it. Yeah. Everyone said I didn't finish it. And I go, okay, it's too long. The hour's too long. Agreed. We don't have enough time for the hour. Right. Right? So I go, okay, I'm going to do it shorter. I'm going to do 15. I put four clubs instead of five. I cut it into 15. I put it out on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And that weekend, I sell out a couple shows in San Diego. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, I'm not a sellout guy. Like, that's maybe it's maybe I have a market that I didn't know about or something in San Diego. And then I did like Columbus, Ohio. And I sold like 1,600 tickets. Damn. And Yeah, I was just there, man. It's awesome there. It's, it's an amazing great crowd. crowd. It's Beautiful an amazing club. club. Fucking great crowd. And 
And I figured, and I was like, no, this is a good club. They get people out. Like maybe it's some people, but like people are coming up to me and they're saying they watch the YouTube thing. I was like, what the fuck is happening? So I go, oh shit, maybe it's on YouTube. It's like, maybe that's where people are consuming this shit. And I start, I go, you know, I'm going to put a new clip out every single week for a year. Yeah. And I start putting these new clips out on YouTube and like Instagram and, and Twitter. And a couple of them will start to go viral. And then my YouTube guy about like halfway in hits me up and he goes, uh, Hey man, something kind of cool has happened. I'm like, what's up? And he's like, like when people watch a video, they end up watching for like two hours. Wow. And I was like, what? That's like a kidnapping. That's like almost like Stockholm syndrome. It is dude. It is. And I was like, that's the Schultz effect. I guess. But what, what I realized was, was that if you ask somebody, Hey, can you sit here for an hour and watch something? They will say no. Yes. That's an absurd thing to ask somebody. I agree. But we've all been in that place where we get locked in a wormhole, be it on Instagram, our phone, whatever, in these digestible content. Me watching clips of you. Yeah. You know, I've watched I've watched everybody watching clips of Owen Benjamin in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this like this like uh like there was I remember watching a clip with you and, and Chrissy D uh, going at each other on OP and oh, yeah. something like that. It was so funny and I'm watching another clip. I'm just lost in this little wormhole, right? And it, and this is what this is what content is now. So I made it digestible. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the whole slice of the pizza. It was like the little bagel bites. That's what I think about. That's what I think about because I'm I'm going to tape one soon here. Yes. And that's exactly the thing that I've come to, come to the conclusion. Like even with like Dali and Swartz and they just did some. Yes. Um, And they there's only a half hour even on Netflix. So well, it's like, yeah, people want it in a smaller bite. So, and, yeah. and it's almost better that way in a sense because. Absolutely. Half hour's too long. Yeah. Half, not, not saying it's not too long. It's not too long for your fans. Right. But if you're trying to acquire new. Right. Right. Because that's what I was in. I was in acquisition. I was like, I want people to find me. So how do you find me? It's it's Costco. Costco right, share this. Hey, have you seen this thing about this guy? And your friend will say, hey, check out this clip. Your friend will say, check this whole movie. Right. Check this whatever. So it just creates this place where you share. And It's like Amistad. I, the boat scenes, I'm in. The rest of it, whatever. I don't want to watch that. Yeah. Fucking email me the fucking boat cuts, bro. <laughs> Give me the boat you know? cuts, bro. I want to see the party. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. And it's there. And it's like... I basically put this thing, I put this thing together and I was like, okay, it's got to be short form. Specials are done. And because the goal of the special was always to get an audience. That's what we wanted. Yeah. I never cared about a, sp I thought I cared about a special. Right. But I really just cared about having fans be able to perform live. I thought I wanted a sitcom. Like, I don't want a sitcom. Right. Like, I want to perform live in front of my fans. I want to do stand up. Right. And everything around stand up. Right. right. So I go, okay, how can I, can I figure this, this whole thing out? And then, I noticed this shit that started to happen is like these things that I would put out there in the world would start growing and affecting things. Mm -hmm. You know, like I did that special that I called 441 where I did all the clubs and then Comedy Central like rips it off and, and calls it thank you, good night and does the exact same thing. Mm. Right? And then like, I was like, hmm. And then I looked at Netflix and they do a series of 15 minute specials and I'm like, hmm. And I'm not saying that they stole it. Right. But what they noticed... Because the way the industry works is the industry works like wind, right? It's like they're sailboats. Wherever the wind is going, that's, that's where, where the go. boat goes. Well, that's why I say money isn't loyal. That's one of the things that I realized. It was like I kept thinking like, oh, see, my perspective was this industry hates me. And I think that some of that was my own bad perspective from growing up and just Not that thinking. they hate you. They just saw MTV and they were like, that's it. They're like, right. we can't do it. That's, I promise you that's what it was. No, so that's not it at all. No, I, dude, I've been working for so long that has nothing to do with it. So, but you what, don't think initially that not was a, the oh maybe a long time ago, but I'm talking about now. I'm talking oh. about like in the past like five years. Oh, you know? this is different. Yeah. This is okay. Yeah, okay, I'm okay. talking about like yeah. It seems like the industry won't give me like my perspective was always like the industry won't give me a chance. The industry won't give me right. a chance. Right. Um. So, yeah, my thing was like they don't. But then I started to realize they don't even know what's good. Like the people that are making these choices, I never even see at the club. Taste makers with no taste. Yeah. And so it's kind of baffling to me. But you, but don't you feel like... They're done. But did you feel like you... Like, did you feel that? Did you feel like these people aren't giving me a chance? Yeah, because they didn't. I mean, like when I got JFL New Faces... I had a network deal already with MTV. Okay, I, so you had some so you had some uh, you had some energy going right there. But not in stand up. The stand up industry has always been closed. The okay. other industry which is separate for oh acting and stuff like that. That kind of stuff. Yeah, and I th and I thought I wanted it but I didn't want it. Right. But like so I had a sitcom 
We are, I was a lead in a sitcom on IFC. It was called Benders. You know what I mean? We did a season. You can watch on Netflix now. I like. I had a Hulu dramedy that I was on. It was produced by CISO, and then Hulu bought it. But like, there was things I did in the industry. I did films and stuff like that because they really didn't care about what was going on in the stand-up world. Stand-up is so isolated really but the stand-up people in the stand-up world they all talk to each other and they say oh this guy's got a scent on him so i go okay i gotta get around this and my my way of getting around it was essentially like there's a story that i'll use like uh about nescafe breaking into japan you know nescafe that little oh yeah i like it so like the way they got into japan they asked this consultant guys like how do we get in and then they go the consultant guy goes uh uh basically you can't get in for 15 years they're like why the fuck not like they don't even know what coffee is like it's not tea you're trying to be tea you're not tea it's like yeah. they don't have any emotion to attach it to it means nothing to and them it looks like dirty tea really it looks like shit tea right yeah so he goes this is what you're gonna do you're gonna spend millions of dollars to make a cartoon in Japan and then you're gonna make some candies that have to do with that cartoon mm. and those candies are gonna taste like coffee and then in 15 years when these kids grow up they're gonna want that coffee go to Japan now they fucking love coffee they do it is insane i can't even imagine a japanese person on coffee son <laughs> i know they're so zen <laughs> for the first know, time yeah, do we like... need that who, who, who allowed that <laughs> but uh, great but, uh but yeah so they're like into it and Fucking so I, great dude kind of spoils them dude in a like way, you don't want Japanese people and with coffee. No, you. It's one or the other. It's like yeah. you're fucking up my tourist experience in your country. Yeah, I want to know somebody that I can honestly take a nap or while they're awake and yes. everything is going to be cool. And you're and I'm going to get it. my rest. Yes. Yeah. You're, they're like the perfect. That's who girlfriend. Japanese people are. Yeah. yeah. Like you're not asking me what's going on. Like a stalker always wanted an Asian stalker. A ninja. Quiet. That's yes. what ninjas are. Effective. They're stalkers. Yeah. They're on your roof. Yeah. But they're quiet. Yeah. You don't even know they're there. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. These so lazy good. ass American stalkers. Fucking yeah, snacking in the woods. Come on. Leaving fucking trails. What a light. Yeah. Get a fucking <laughs> mask. A yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So I, 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 I'm learning about that shit and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So you got effect underneath. Right. So you just found a new way in. Basically, I, I realized I had to like change the industry. Right. Right. So it's like if I plant the seed and it grows up into it, then I can do what I want. Right. Right. So like me doing the short special and then seeing that in Comedy Central, seeing that in Netflix and like even like Ray Romano's new special. I'm not saying he stole it from me at all. Right. But like his new special is going to the comedy cellar and then unannounced and walking around to the village underground unannounced. Like that's 441. That's what I did in 441. Now, yeah, I'm not saying they took that in any way from me. What I'm saying is like I made that okay to be in a special. Yeah. Right. It's like when you see that has like millions of views. Then the network goes, well, we don't need it to be in a big theater. Yeah, it's cool that it's yeah. in a small little thing. Right. Right? It's like... Yeah, it's funny. They almost justify like taking artistic ideas from people as business. Yeah. It's like, okay, we just say, oh, this is a good business move yeah. to now do it like this. Yeah. Even though if another artist did that, oh, you would be, be like, oh, that's kind of and fucked up. And we call him a scumbag too. But like everything I, like, everything I do, like the way like th- that I put the clips on the internet and these kind of stuff, like I do that for us. Right. Like literally any idea that I've put out there in the world that you think is good as a comedian, please take that. I am not in competition with any of you. There are no longer eight comedy specials we're fighting for a year. Yeah. My world is on YouTube. Right. If your world, a lot of it is on YouTube. Yeah. You've had immense success on YouTube. And it's like more comics will start to realize that is. If they can own their own world. But all now, I'm trying to do is help you own your own world. And if you have any anything I'm doing, if the blueprint is there, you fucking take it and yeah. then improve it and then tell me. Yeah. Be like, yo, start doing this on your videos. It helps it. Yeah, wear a hat. That, yeah. Boom. <laughs> That's the trick. Yeah. Get that hat. It's boy. all about the hat. Yeah. <laughs> Viking hat. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's interesting, man. It's interesting not to hold like any like You don't need the industry, bro. Right. You're, it's it's over like But it's here, over. so here's interesting. Over. What right? What oh I st- I mean I see that this as is well. the industry. It's you like, have a network right here. Right. That's the you know, it's so funny. The somebody network. said that the other day. They're like, yeah. Oh, somebody said that to me at the comedy store. They're like, you know, it's funny. Like, if this was an older comedian. He goes, I'd have given anything when I was young. I was looking to be on a network. And now you guys have your own networks. Like, you don't yeah. even realize you have your own place. What was a network? You can do whatever you want. Network was just eyeballs. Yeah. That's all it was. Is yeah, eyeballs. There's this, for some reason, there's this other idea. Validation matrix. Yeah, that's We what that validate is. ourselves. We validated ourselves by an antiquated model right right there's there's the and i'm kind of a traditionalist in a lot of ways so some of that stuff that resonates out. with me a lot you know a you lot know of times like porn? oh i need this to no. in order to you know it's just like 
it's like anything. It's like, oh, it gives you it gives you a certain level of status. It was just kind of what was indoctrinated, status, man. what was burned in your brain. Yeah, you I know? know, but that's that like that's that southern shit, like that like class shit. Right. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah, you yeah. like see somebody with it, you know, with fucking white gloves walking down the street and you're like, Oh, that's one of the rich people and they're right. from this part of town and that kind of shit. And it's like we had it in New York too. Oh, there's the Upper East Side, you know, girls and they go to the Catholic schools and they've got all this money and it's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like what did you always want to do? Perform for sold out crowds? Yeah, I mean, I like my, making my friends laugh at the table, dude. That's what I liked but when I was you know, in terms of oh, as a performer, comic. I just wanted. I should maybe I should shouldn't answer that question for you. What did you always want? Yeah, I just wanted to be able to do the best work that I, I wanted to put myself in a position to do the best work that I could. So for me, a lot of times it's just like taking care of myself off stage so that I know that I so then I can do what I'm. You know what I'm able to do. Are you taking care of off stage? Yeah, now I'm doing a better job of it. Yeah, so and now I do a better job of taking care of it off stage, and it's better on stage. <clears throat> and and you feel good about what you're doing on stage? Yeah, and now I feel bad. I mean, it, look in my life and our, you know, Hollywood. I mean, you know, with the election, all that, it was like everybody from the place that I'm from is like dumb. They're an idiot. They're all racist. They're all this, and that was so fucking. That kind of shit made me so angry. Good. That that made me want to be like lean into it. Yeah. Well, now I have to also, because some people will be like, "Oh, you you sell out by working with Hollywood." And it's like, well, I want. You also have to recognize these people don't know any better. Mm -mm. You know, even though these people act like they're the smartest people, they all went to these fancy schools and they got in there for fucking, you know, a lot of like. Um, nepotism and that kind of stuff and they all act like they have struggled so much but they've mm -hmm. really had a lot of help along the way that they don't know any better they're trying to survive right everybody's trying to survive and so you have to so that so i can't be like it doesn't help me anymore anyway also to be like fuck you this way it helps me more to be like hey look at this you know you want to say that somebody can't come from where i'm from and try their best and try not to be racist and try not to be this way, but be understanding of what's going on. Try to be anyway, at least be, you know, consciously making an effort, then you're fucking wrong because I wouldn't be alive if that, That's right. you know. I can so, tell by how diverse your staff is. Like, Yeah. We got a young white guy and he <laughs> is all, A young white guy and a middle-aged white guy. Well, he's a premature baby. <laughs> so who knows what color he would have been if he would have went all nine months. Good point. Dude, you know, Pigment. So you there you go. He could be a twink too. Yeah. So we got a twink and who knows? Pigment is the last six days. But <laughs> when I, you know, when I looked at you, I'll be honest with you. When I saw, because what happens is when somebody starts to bubble and because we have the internet now, it's a free market. It's not like who execs want to bubble. Right. It's who the world wants to bubble, who the ecosystem asks for. And I knew you were starting to bubble because a girl sent me a clip of yours or asked me about you and then people would mention me with you they would say shit like they'd be like bro you and Theo Vaughn are my new favorite comics yeah. or something like that and I'd be like okay so this kid's bubbling let me let me check on his stuff and there was some bit that you did I forget it maybe it was a white privilege bit or something like that that was online and I was like oh he's got to lean into this because everybody that's from where you're from is looking for somebody to represent them because nobody is, yeah. especially in this world. There are people representing them in their world, right? but who's representing them in this world? Like America right now is waiting for the likable, how do I call it? Like hick? Like, not hick, but like, what's the term for like Southern dude? Like the fucking- Well, I mean, I say, I, I consider myself rural is what I consider rural, myself. whatever, but I like- I consider myself redneck. I'm not that shit, you know, like we didn't have any of that stuff, you know, like I'm just from a rural place and I'm white. And we're the, it's basically waiting for it because the majority of America is that. Right. We get this because we tour. These people that stay in their offices in New York and LA don't understand it. But how do they act like they understand it so much? You don't much? need them, Theo. Right. I, like that's- Doesn't thing, matter. Once you realize that you don't need them. Right. You, you, I think I realize that. It you, just makes me sad that they don't. It won't because it's falling apart. Dude, it, like, deal. we're talking about in three years, everything's done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when I mean everything, I mean all these networks that are saying no to you won't be in the building they're in in three years. Right. So even if you gave them content, it's gone in three. Like, everything you're building should be here. Is there anything you can't do yourself? 
No. What show do you do? You need I mean, explosions. Nick's pretty stressed on. out, but he also has his own personal issues. I think. Going <laughs> yeah. On. So you got to get through that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need to. Got to get guy, through your fucking he's personal fresh blood, issues. Blood, young, so we can always tap into him for a pint. Gang. You know? Yeah. That's a little fucking twink, boy. <laughs> twink. You know? Boy. But he's in a fucking new movie coming out, and he fucking does our booking, bro. And Dude, he's that's a, beautiful. Yeah. So he's really. So yeah, we got a good. We got a good crew, and we're about to start a production arm and go do a co-pro with a comedy store on a new project. See, so, are you? And you're doing this. Yeah. You don't need anything else. The only tricky thing right now is how we get advertising dollars right. from TV to the place where people are actually watching, which is us. Yeah, it doesn't seem fair that they get big advertising dollars and we get, re- you know, not and big. That's just because those ad execs that are cutting those deals are 50. Right. Once they become 30, which will be very soon because 50 retires, mm-hmm. once they become 30 and 35. 50 also overdoses. Hopefully. So, well, not hopefully. We hope that everybody finds, you know, a new experience and a more comfortable way of life. But sometimes that's happening. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Point is, then it's fu- it's coming all down. Yeah. It really is. It's as simple as that. Because right now. No, this is good to hear, man, because some of this is stuff where I question myself. What do you, you know? want? What do you want? Huh? What do you want? I don't know, dude. I didn't have breakfast. I wanted, um, but overall. I don't know. What do you want content-wise? What do I want to do? I want to start a kids channel, you know, uh, and do some kids stuff. You know? Really? Yep. So I think we'll do that this year. What else? What do you need to do for that? Content-wise, nothing. We're going to shoot a special in about six weeks at the Comedy Store. We haven't announced those it? dates yet. Where are you going to go with it? Um, n- I'm going to put some of the clips on the YouTube. Have to. Yep. And some of Instagram, it. Instagram, will be Then it will be available for sale as a larger chunk to an outlet if they want it. Why sell it? You know? But if I can use some of the clips on YouTube and the ones that I want to use, then I think that's that's good if it's a place that would bring in new viewers to me. Yes, It's not just smart. me about bringing my viewers or, my, you know, people that are part of our group here to them. Yeah. And outside of that, we want to do, like... I want to have a halfway house one day That's f- that help, that is funded by stand-up comedy. So then it's like people... It's actually going to be the 51% house. It's halfway and a, just a touch more. And um, and it's for people that need help, you know? And it's going to be funded by the jokes, you know? So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be good, man. Because, cause, you know, because a lot of people are fucking sick out there. Yeah. A and, lot of people that are fucked up. And you, you know? felt that way? Yeah. It and just, you... and it's like, yeah, yeah, like, I'll be okay. You know, I'll have enough to eat and a place to live and it's going to be. But you want to help them. Yeah. It's like, imagine if. Yeah. You know, there were direct places, like even in your community one day, you know, you never know how big it could get. Maybe you have 30 houses around the country where people are getting help. Yeah. And you're just fucking driving around making r- stories about how coked up you were in a fucking yeah. someone's house if that's funding it all. You know, it's like this perfect circle. Yeah. So that would be super cool. You yeah. Know? Well, Those not, are some of my dreams. I why you can't do it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's so beautiful. I don't, you're I don't ready know where to... some of my fear comes from then sometimes. I think that you're just, you're caught in this, this Hollywood vacuum which you're right which makes people think that you can't create anything without some guy uh, saying okay create it but you're also part of the system that's breaking that down right like like i like i was saying i was just saying to the guys on the fighter kid it's like Vernon and byron and byron you can't like you can't compete with what we're doing. Like you know, like Netflix is they spend a hundred million dollars on a movie, right? That distracts you for two hours. Right. YouTube spends zero million dollars on this podcast that distracts you for two hours. Yeah. You can't win that battle, Netflix. YouTube won. They're just waiting to drown Netflix. They're waiting for Netflix to just keep on piling up debt, and then it's over. So what I'm saying is, you're already in the ground floor of the future. Right. So everything you do, content-wise, can be done right here. It's that's already over. And then when you start making monetizing and you start making some money, you can do it. You're just in a good position. And the reason why people fuck with you is because you don't want to take. Your natural inclination is to give, and that's a leadership quality that not a lot of people have. Like I think that's why. I needed to go through that experience in my career where like nobody wanted anything from me is because I needed to be stripped to nothing before I could lead. Mm. I, I I needed to feel zero and get comfortable in zero so that if I went back, it's like, oh no, I've been there. Yeah. That doesn't, it's like why like, it's like you ever talk to like like rappers or athletes that went broke, they're like, I don't care. Like I'm, I was broke my whole life. Like I'm comfy. 
Do you think black people are better at being broke than white people? I think broke people are better at being broke. Yeah. It's just simple. Like, if you know anybody that's broke, they still got pussy. Yeah. Sorry. I know you don't use these words. We can use pussies, okay? okay. Don't use so, it a ton. Okay. They still got they pussy. show me any. I mean, they unless got, it's a drawing. I got you. Okay. I. They still got friends yeah they still got jokes oh dude being poor was fun dude we used to burn everything in the fucking ditch bro bro it's rich great. people can't do that that's a no. fire if you do that when you're rich <laughs> that's true if you do that when you're poor nobody fucking even comes it's true dude, we used to call the cops all the time and they would never come do they come a month later yeah dude being poor in a lot of ways is better because you got hope there's yeah. somewhere to go. Somewhere to go. Right? It's like, yo, one day we're going to be rich and we're just going to have our own ditch yeah. in our backyard and we can just burn all the shit we want. We're going to have a shelving unit. Yeah. Dude, I remember wanting a fucking shelving unit in my fucking room like Did you a get motherfucker. It? Did you get that? No, nah, we didn't get it, but now I have one. Day. one. Yeah. But I remember, dude, somebody from the fucking... Somebody would drive by and throw dead animal. Some veterinarian who was saving money, cutting yeah. corners, yeah. throw dead animals into the ditch. So we'd be out there throwing fucking calf vertebrae at each other and shit. Fun. And playing football with like a Cossacks of some kind of damn yeah. animal. If your rich PETA comes for you. Yeah. You're rich. That's a fucking crime, bro. Sucks. That's forensic files, dude. That's American greed, maybe. Dude, it really is. Yeah. What does every serial killer do? He kills fucking animals. Yeah. Right? That's that you're describing the behavior of serial yeah, killers. Dude, yeah. But when you're poor, it's just fun. And here we were, yeah, go deep, dude. I gotta stern them. You know? <laughs> go deep. It was I just a different <laughs> But yeah, you're right, man. There was definitely some value to there was definitely yeah, there's there was definitely a ton of value. What are you gonna to take that? away from me? That's the thing. It was like I need to go to zero because then I would have no fear right yeah if i was at six i could go down to zero so i'd be a pussy you had me stuttering my peas because i feel like you're afraid of the uh the bad words but no, i'm gonna say doing it anyway. okay right now so if i was at six i'd be a pussy because like fuck i could go down to zero but i went down to zero and i got comfy at it and now i'm at a place where i'm prepared to do whatever because yeah. you can't take anything from me yeah I like that, man. I guess there's. I guess for me, I feel. I still feel some fear, like that they'll that they will find a way. That this hypothetical they will find. Some what are they going to take, take away? You're worried about having future shit taken away, right? You're like, oh, what if I lose out on this opportunity to do this? And what if I don't get this Netflix special? Or what if I don't get this Comedy Central thing? This that the other. Um, no, I'm kind of okay. Like I got a pilot with Comedy Central right now, and mm -hmm. it's actually based on the podcast, so it's like. It really fits in exactly like what my you know our vibe is, our vibe is yeah. and our goals and and stuff. So that feels great, you know. But if it doesn't happen, I still feel okay. See, you know? it's all icing, dude. And that is totally different. Like, like it's almost like, you know, it used to be I'd wait, you know, I'd be so fucking nervous, and empty. the months would just go away, yeah, because I didn't have anything else. But now it's like in you know, in two years, I'd love to make a movie and put you know my friends in it and work together and like have. You know, neat ideas. I want to make like a fuss fit way. You know, you ever seen Foot that movie? Fuss fit way. Yeah, yeah. I want to make like a movie like that. I can see it. You know, or um... you should get involved with those guys. Do you know David? Mm -mm. Do you know uh, you know David Gordon Green? Have you heard of him? He like mm -mm. he directs a lot of shit that uh, that uh, Danny does. Danny McBride. Yeah, but yeah, you should absolutely. I met Danny McBride one time. Yeah, but yeah, I think maybe after like this year, maybe we'll try to start doing something like that. I'd love to maybe get one of these you know do a co-production kind of thing first just to even get in that world sure because also it's interesting having to think like a business person and then also still have time to do the comedy you know it's yeah like, you run thin but it's like i think you find out <laughs> i think you find out what truly makes you happy when you have nothing and when you have everything yeah right it's like Every rich person's like, money won't make you happy. Every poor person's like, once I get rich, I'll be happy. Yeah. Right? So it's like, once you're rich, you at least have the perspective. Or not rich, but once you get enough money where mm -hmm. it doesn't make a difference if you have more. Yeah. You have the perspective to go, oh, chasing this money ain't going to give me happiness. But you know what really made me happy? Man, when I was working on them jokes. Yeah. Man, I should just work on them jokes. Yeah. Right? Oh, there's this one moment in one of my jokes, and that's like the thing that gives me the most happiness. It's like, it's kind of like I go the whole set just for this one, like, two or three second part, and it's like, oh, that's the part. Can you tell me, or is it weird to uh, say? No, it's just like this little kind of act out at the end of like, my mom won a perm one time when I was growing up on yeah. the radio, and uh, <laughs> it's just like this one moment when I tell part of that story that makes me, it's like, I just feel like a different person for a second. You yeah. Know? It's like a... Yeah, it's just like I disappear. It's like a, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like a different, like I live in a different world for a couple seconds and it's cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's like that's the cake 
and if they laugh yeah that's icing dude like yeah like I got to a place where like I'm just creating the things I want to create. Like I want you to come on the Inside Joke Show, right? Like yeah. I just and we'll do it again, maybe with with uh you know the fight. Yeah, and I'll kid be in New York in a couple of weeks. Dude, and, I love and, it, and then in a couple months. But like it was just like I fell in love with creating. Like I had a conversation with my buddy Cypher Sounds, and he. Oh yeah, I love him, bro. He he influenced hip hop so much. Without I didn't even I knew enough that I wanted to like show other people mm -hmm. but like if discovering rihanna rick ross like sean paul like like all these different things that like even the eh, know eh, that eh, you know that air horn sound oh i hate that that's him wow dude he gave you that pain fuck he bothered you with that oh. like but the point was like i did the podcast right <laughs> boom jesus christ yeah dude. that's actually a dance hall thing but he like loved dance hall music so much he brought it <laughs> into hip-hop but like i did the podcast and i just had so much fun doing it i felt so proud of doing it nobody didn't even listened yeah and, in that, and i sat there for a moment and i was like oh oh this is this is the goal yeah it's not waiting to see how many listens i got and all the comments and all like it was like no i'm already happy if, yeah. if you guys fuck with it too that's dope that's cool this past weekend is brought to you by skillshare skillshare it's an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. You'll discover many ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity, and career. You can take classes in whatever you want. You want to make something. You want to do painting. You want to do, um, you know, archery, but not maybe, I mean, you can maybe see some stuff on it, but all types of stuff, social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing even illustration. Whether you're looking to discover a new passion, start a side hustle, or gain new professional skills, Skillshare is there to keep you learning, thriving, and reaching those new year goals. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare, a place to offer that offers countless classes. You don't need to go back to college for this big degree. You can learn it now. Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 courses for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Thank you for supporting this past weekend. This past weekend is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Now, a lot of time you see somebody and they don't know what the fuck is going on with them. And then suddenly they do. And that person probably is someone who bought a Ridge Wallet. A, a wallet is something you put in the back of your pocket. Wh where is it? Who knows? Somebody might have stole it. Or maybe there's a leak, uh, you know, in the ceiling and it dripped into your pocket and back pocket and ruined everything. There goes all your shit. Well, Ridge Wallet is that front pocket carry. You're not carrying around all these extra photos and, you know, different recipes or whatever you got folded up in there, something special, you know, for that exotic meatloaf. Now you can just do what you need. That front pocket carry. Keep all your items handy. Go to RidgeWallet.com and use code Theo at checkout for 10% off. That's code Theo for 10% off at RidgeWallet.com. And let's get to the episode. What do you have now, like, as far as support goes? So, but do you have an agent and stuff like that? You, like, you, work, you have to work. Fire you have to my work. manager. Fire your manager. Yeah, I don't have a manager now either. You don't need a babysitter. What we need are producers. Right. Right? Like, we need, I don't know if that's your role, but, like, I need. I have a guy who does all my video. Nick, very questionable role, but also <laughs> has done a great job in helping me, you know, build, build what's going on. Yeah. yeah, especially for a premature. Very. That's what I'm saying, dude. Just do my best every day. Yeah, we don't have post-mature babies. He could have gone post if he wanted to. Dude. I think he came out early because he was curious. <laughs> going post. That's fucking. We got to look into that. Like ten months. Ooh. Eleven. Dude comes out with dreads. Full hair. Yeah. <laughs> Black dudes come out late. I could imagine that. Like, damn, he was supposed to be here on Wednesday. You know, he shows up with two other black dudes. And you're like, what is going on? Yo, y'all didn't know they were down here with me. <laughs> hey, we were just kicking it, bro. <laughs> Dude, so it's like, like guys like you and I that want to create content. Yeah, 
and already have the ideas what we want to create and already have the executions. We just need executors. I just need, yeah, I guess I just need to more, start working with more executors. I don't need you to fucking s- set up a meeting with a company I don't want to sell something to. Yeah. I want to put all my shit on my network. So I need somebody who's a producer that I can go, hey, I want to do this show here. It's a charity show. We're going to give all the money to 51% of the halfway house, whatever it is. Can you set it up so I don't got to be on all these emails? Mm. So, but do you get any flack from people in the industry, like like trying to like instill that you're doing something wrong or anything like that, or that you don't? I'm like, I don't even. All I know is that I I just keep my foot on their neck and I just make sure that they're copying what I'm doing. Right. Like everything, or at least I'm influencing. I'm underneath them, right? I'm right. the Nest Cafe. So like, even with the inside joke show that I wanted you to be about, it's like that's. And we oh. can humbly mention it again. Inside jokes yeah, is also yeah. your podcast. No, 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 no. It's not the podcast. Oh, it's, it's not. A, this yeah. one with Neil and uh... uh. They did the episode. Yeah, Neil. Okay, Neil and, and I do just it. Did one. It's basically I get four comics all bring a joke that's fucked up, like offensive, uh-huh. divides a crowd, right? And and I just we just workshop it. Now I just love talking to comics about jokes. It's yeah. like a joy for me. I just think it's it's like we get comics to talk about like top topical topical shit all the time but like and we kind of care but our jokes we care about right because for those two seconds you're like in a different yeah. world right you love the bit you yeah know? it's fun so it's like but that's so that's me just having fun with it but the the nest cafe shit like the underneath thing is like i see the culture where you can get canceled for a joke mm-hmm. so it's like i need to change that i need people to realize that this is a puzzle for us a joke right and that we it's a bullfight it's like we're in there and we're aware that it's dangerous. We're aware that it's tricky. We're right. not trying to hurt your feelings. We actually want more than anything to make you want laugh. You laugh. Like That's so a good much. Point. And if I get underneath them and they become fans of the creation of the bit, then they'll be in the audience and they'll see you do a bit and maybe it's a little bit offensive. They'll be like, oh, I see where he's going with it. Yeah. Oh, maybe when this changes. But the only way I can change the ecosystem is if I get underneath. Yeah. So that's what all the projects are about. Like even with the new, and this is not a plug, I swear to God. No, like, plug, it's okay. I, no, it's not. But like with the, the new special that I'm dropping is like, for me, it's like I like doing this type of comedy. I like doing a comedy where it's, you know, edgy and, and risky. I'm touching on topics you're not supposed to. And it's like, I I know that no network would allow the, these bits to be on the network because they'd be worried about the backlash. Well, yeah, the industry is almost, they've almost cornered themselves into a place where they can't even function. Correct. Absolutely. So I know in order but for me to do it, I got to put it out. Yeah. And then that will shift the wind. So once I put it out, the wind will go in that direction. And then all of a sudden the networks have their sales up. We'll be like, okay, I guess we're sailing edgy. Right. You know, that's, that's the, that's my thinking with it. Right. Cause yeah. Cause that, and that's what I mean by money is loyal. Then the money will come over that yes. direction because yes. the money's just going to go whatever direction for like, for so long I had this different concept, like, Oh, the money just hates me. Like it doesn't no. want to come my way. But the truth is the money just goes whatever way the, the Nothing current is personal. going. Yes. There's no egos in business. Bro. You think there is though. And, and then, and then there really, really isn't. And the tricky thing about stand up is, and why it's so fucked up is it doesn't make any money. There's no money for the networks in stand-up. So they know that, right? So since they don't make any money out of stand-up, it's not a free market. Why? Because there's no advertisers attached like in the specials and stuff? Nobody watches it. Nobody watches the specials. Um, it's something that you can only do once. You right. Know what I mean, it's it's guacamole. It's like the second you give someone a joke, yeah. it starts to go stale It's like quick. Chinese food. It's Chinese food. It's like milk food. from the gas station. Do you ever get milk from a gas station? No, but I got boiled you eggs. 20, oh, yeah. It's quick. 24 hours. That's it. Done. Dude, Awful. it is bad the next day. Horrible. It's so bad. So it's like, boom, there's a situation where like, oh, well, we don't really care. Like, I'm just going to, if I'm Comedy Central, they've said this to my face. They're like, we just give people specials that we think we can do a TV show with, or they can be a correspondent. Like, it's just an introduction to our audience. Yeah. And I was like, well, do you think maybe that's why people aren't watching? Yeah. It's right? It's like, <laughs> like, yeah, well, they just became this real political lie. Like, everybody became this. Because they got fat. Is that it's what you a think cow, it yeah, because the market was, man, there was only 10 channels we watched on TV. NBC, Fox, MTV, maybe VH1 was probably too old for us when we were kids. Like, oh, I watched it. Maybe. Rock of Love. Oh, that's, so good. that's later. I'm talking about when we were kids, kids. Oh, yeah, I don't, yeah, we didn't have it. Right? I don't think. So it was like. Elton John might have been on her. Exactly. It was like old rock Kevin shit. Kevin Campbell. It was like closeted gay people. It was closeted. Singing. That's what VH1 really was. It really was, dude. Very early. Progressive. Yeah, yeah. The it really was. Classics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real classic man. <laughs> 
Um, we got some questions that came in from some listeners. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into some of those. What's up, boys? Love you both. Gang, gang. Ask hey. Question for you, Schultze. What are the main differences between the L.A. comedy scene and the New York comedy scene from your experience? Love you both. Get it. Gang. L.A.'s killing it. You think? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You guys are killing it. You guys are propping up the scene instead of the scene propping you up. Mm. New York, the scene is propped up by the seller. And uh, it's because you guys have congealed under this uh, empowering like kind of freedom that you've all gotten through your podcasts and this kind of digital content. Rogan's really spearheaded it. but This like, has almost become the alt scene. Yeah, in a weird way, it's become... It's like you're the alt-alt because you guys are more traditional in your stand-up. Yeah. But you are untraditional in the way that you're getting your fans and that kind of stuff. So it's like... But the fact that you've brought back to life the comedy store, that place was dead. I mean, I went there a few years back and it was fucking depressing. Oh, it's been... Yeah. And now it's got life, man. So it's like... When I look at the LA scene, I see the Rat Pack, right? When I see you, Dalia, you know, Brendan and Brian, like when I see you guys all fucking with each other, I see you guys going on Rogan and it's all the same shows and everybody's like, everybody's kind oh, of yeah, supporting it's everyone. Universe. It's almost like Marvel or something. Son, it is. It's Justice League or some shit, right? Yeah. It's like the Avengers, so... Bobby Lee. All all the guys, Coco right? Diaz. I don't know. I don't know them as well, but of course I know of them. Yeah. But when I see everybody, you guys have created a almost celebrity status and i really call it the rat pack of it within the comedy community here and you have ushered in the next generation of comics in la if you go who's a new york comic all the people that maybe not you but the average person listening thinks of are 50 right or older other oh, like oh colin quinn you know patrice r.i.p you know what i mean bobby kelly yeah dead people dead people bald people dead ass yeah so it's like I got to congeal the New York scene and I have, and I'll do, I just need to get some, I need to get a bunch of things set before I could kind of do it, but I need to bring that back because right now it's just the comedy seller is the greatest comedy club in the world. Yeah. And I don't say that as a knock to the store. I'm just saying that's that's a great, that's all I know. That's all I know. So, and it's, and it's so powerful that the, the comics can kind of, I don't want to say leech on it, but it can prop us up. The comics in LA took the store from the doldrums of comedy to the place to be. Just by talking about it on your podcast, etc. It's like, I need to do that with New York comedy again. I need to redefine what New York comedy is or like bring back the definition of it. And... Because yeah, it was like organic, and it really everything out here is having organic. I mean, I just remember I got a text from Rogan what, or a DM from him one night, and was like, "Hey, do you want to be on the podcast?" And I felt like I had just gotten on the Tonight Show, you know. Well, me. it That's is. What it was. It, he because I tried out for the Tonight Show seven times, you know, <laughs> and never could get on. You, and you know, it's a shame. You would have killed. Yeah, you would have killed because the people that watch the Tonight Show are those people you were speaking about, right? The oh, people that watch dying it. to have somebody come on in there and entertain them. And that's how stupid these people are that book these shows. Is there still? The people that are watching The Tonight Show are the the exact people that The Tonight Show often makes fun of. Yeah. How fucking dumb can you be? And they're so loving, most of them, that they continue to try and be supportive. They They put up with it. They put up with it. Yeah. They put up with it. They're like, oh. They don't know know better. Well, that's the other thing that like people on the coast don't realize is that like, you can call it rural, but like rural America has the attitude of they don't know better. Right. We think that... Like, and I was guilty of this back in the day before I kind of really started traveling the country. We think that like, oh, they're too stupid to even know that we're make fun of them. And rural America's like, oh, It's sad. It's they just okay. don't know any better. It's a, They don't yeah. know any better. They don't know that. They, Literally is it. They haven't been home in a few years. That's what they think. You know, it's sad. Nobody's cooked for them in a while. You know, it, they, they, nobody cares about them. And it's yeah. like, we're both. They're all in lawsuits. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. I agree. you saying that. <clears throat> makes all those people feel like defended and you're not you're saying in a way where like coastal people laugh too right because you're this is all you're all in lawsuits that's a funny line yeah to make fun of somebody who thinks that they're living the life and it's like you haven't seen a tree in a week yeah you haven't walked on grass yeah i didn't know about grass 
Yeah. I didn't know about grass, yeah, grass until cool. I was like 10. Crab grass is tricky, but the re- other they got good grass out there. I'm still just with grass grass. Yeah. I'm working on it. No, if you're doing grass grass, you're doing good. Okay. Crab grass is like, is this no, grass? I just don't even know what is that this is. rope? Yeah, it's like grass and rope kind of mixed together. Ah, sounds horrible. It's bad. But, I mean, it's useful like if you're trying to make something. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting. That's kind of like... That's, They're uh, waiting for you. I even say on stage right now, it's like, these people don't know any better. They're third, fourth, fifth generation fancy people and they just they don't even their grandfathers used to at least know somebody or be from where you were from or have spent time there they don't even know anybody from there now how about this so they just think it's okay just to judge them what what is your culture like what is new york food it's not even from new york it's pizza right it's from the places that you're making fun of yeah right like it's probably from a recipe from Detroit or a recipe from Cleveland. Italy. Yeah. It's not from America, right? Yeah. But it's like, what I'm trying to say is like, the people that are from the homeland, they have things that have existed there for hundreds of years. Yeah. Right? You live in a city, you are living in a very inorganic environment. Like, yeah. weird. It is weird. I even find myself in this, I'm born and raised in Manhattan, New York. That Jesus. is weird. Really? Weird. What were your parents? Where are they from? They're from there? Mom was born and raised in Scotland. Really? She had to put trees outside the window of our apartment because she missed seeing green shit. Damn. I never understood it. Just painted the window green at one point. That would have been smart. Yeah. She's Scottish. Oh. Yeah. Dude, Scottish people are wild, bro. Wild. Wild. What happened to them? They're still there. They're still there. They're still there. What's happening to them? They're great. they're just chilling. I think they're just chilling. They like to fight. Oh, Scottish people are everything, dude. Yeah. They're like... Yeah. No emotion about anything. Oh, dude. Fucking Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. All that. All of that. Yeah, all of that. So much going on, bro. So much going on. Yeah. They're the rural people of the UK. Are they really? Yeah, that's yeah. the... And I love them, man. Yeah, there's a guy who always sends me snaps of him doing cocaine from Scotland all the time. That's what's up. I guess we got cocaine. All the time. And then they honestly just stopped, like, abruptly. <laughs> so... I hope that that guy honestly is doing okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be a horrible. <laughs> yeah, Jotty, I think was the guy's name, and I hope he's doing all right. Um, because they suddenly fucking stopped it, and he was doing a lot. Like a lot. It took some of the snaps were long. So, um, what else? What other questions do we have? Did oh, we shit. That, that was question? just one question. Yeah, that's just yeah. one. We got another. Andrew, what's up? Brent from Fairbanks, Alaska. I was I've been wondering, Fairbanks. what are some of the weirdest places you've toured to? Maybe some uh, interesting stories about little towns or something. Uh, also, was Fairbanks, Alaska one of them? Gang, gang. Gang, bro. Uh, I've been to Fairbanks. Have you? Yeah. Obvious witness protection guy right there. Yeah. Sunglasses in Alaska. Yeah. That is fucking WPP all over it. Witness um, protection. Have you been somewhere like that and performed yeah. somewhere rural? I went to I went to Fairbanks. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it sucked. Did it? It sucked. What was it? It was it This is why it sucked. Were you hunting chicks? Do you go hunting chicks when you go? What are you uh, doing? I had a, I brought a girl with me. Uh but wow. like it sucked because Everything that I wanted out of Alaska wasn't really there. It was just another city. Oh. It just happened to be cold as fuck, mm. right? Like I wanted the you know the Yukon or whatever that shit is. I wanted to see the bears, the gold rolling down the hill, all of it. Yeah, I was excited. For Salmon that. jumping in your jumping. fucking shirt while you're walking on the street. Yeah, whoa, this is yeah. sick. Fresh, right out the river. Yeah, I didn't see it. The same as drinking fucking fresh water. That's what they do. Yeah, and they didn't have it. None of it. Oh. Dude, no, that's not true. Maybe it is. I guess fish die of thirst when they're out of... That's really what kills them. Yeah, but the good ones fucking go hard, dude. The Clint Eastwoods of fish, they're out there for a day or two. They could. Yeah. Not even wobbling. Just having a fucking cigarette. <laughs> Adjust They're their tail. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to flop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, dude, Fairbanks, it just, I, I, it was, but he knows it. He understands what it is. We went on like a hike. It was it was okay, but it could have been any other like place. And I, when you go that far, it's like if you go to Dubai, you need to see some Dubai shit. Right. You can't just see, you know, sand. You wanted to do the Iditarod. You wanted to have more of an experience. Yeah. So you probably should have done. So yeah, so yeah, so maybe you could have done a little more, and maybe there it just could have been a different experience. I tried, for you. I tried, we tried to do. I, Did mean, you? I, I pet reindeer. Oh wow! Yeah, and then ate reindeer right after. That was pretty gnarly. Oh yeah, yeah. 
That's good. Yeah. Mm. I've had pony. I've never had reindeer before. How's pony? <sighs> Let me think again. Let me take go back in a pony's just horse, right? <clears throat> if you want to look, I don't look at it like that. But female horse is that what a pony is? No, it's just small horse that's kind of you know been through a lot, and it tastes the weird texturally and in your mouth. It tastes like a kind of like a beef that people kind of forgot about, right? In your brain, it tastes like kind of like a kid's birthday party a little bit. Ooh. It has that kind of like mental taste of what should a pony be doing, you know? Ah. Doing rides at the park or whatever, you know, or something like that. What else do we have? I'm getting over bronchitis. Theo, what's up? Gang, gang. gang what's up, bro? Andrew? Andrew, I saw that you're from New York. Theo and me, we're from the South. And the clip you used was from the Comedy Zone in Charlotte talking about our bathrooms. Andrew, talk about some of your observations about the South since you're from New York. Classic North-South rivalry. Mix it up, guys. Gang, gang. Peace. Yep. I like that Civil guy. War II, dude. <laughs> Let's go. My buddy had a funny joke about if they ran it back, then the North would be fucked. You think? Well, just because you guys have guns, like we gave them all up. Yeah, I've thought about that a lot, man. I think sometimes yeah. about the direction that, it, like, uh, if America's headed, I think about would state government be better at this point because some, you know, states are so different, and it's like you're just arguing about two perspectives that other people can't see. That was the idea know? initially. Was it? Yeah, like that exact idea. The in the initial idea was, hey, dude, I live in Maine. It takes me six months to get to Virginia. Yeah. Why should my laws? affect you or your laws affect me why don't we like have some basic shit that we all agree on and then i'll just do my main thing and you do your virginia thing yeah which i guess is what they do have i guess yeah, they but do it, have it's, that. it's a little bit more like uh i guess uh faded right now but yeah you just you invented america <laughs> without even knowing it. oh wow dude i was that one- was a really poignant organic thought oh thanks man yeah you recognized you recognize a problem yeah, that was really good to just come up with that, man. That's like Alexander Hamilton shit. Dude, hell yeah, bro. Alexander Hamilton Bell, bro. The phone book writer. How about this, though? Yeah. What if, I thought about this, like, what if somebody made an app that told you where companies put their dollars politically so that then you knew which companies you wanted to support? What if I told you that they put them equally on both sides? Is that true? Nah, but most of them will, will play both sides. Yeah. Because you just, whoever wins, I, I got to sell Coca-Cola. Right. So, I got you. You yeah. got me. They're not trying to win the election. They're just trying to win the politician. Right. So they could keep doing their, you know, fuck shit. Right. But it is mm. what it is. I mean, it's a good, uh, transparency is good. I like that with my own money. Because then I thought it would be, yeah, then there's more transparency. Then it's like, okay, then you can, then you could actually affect these these because then companies might say okay i don't want to donate to anybody because i don't want to affect my sales right right? because then you would affect their bottom line yeah i'm like well i'm not because then it would take the big money out of politics because otherwise a company saying okay right now i'm willing to lose half of my clientele by supporting a certain uh, political party or political affiliation but the tricky thing is like both sides sorry we're not addressing your question but we'll get there but like the tricky thing is both sides have something that can be morally reprehensible to, yeah. a, to a group. Oh, so so like if we knew where, let's say Dr. Pepper was giving our money. So Dr. Pepper was like, I gave you know a million. You know, Dr. Pepper, you gave a million dollars to uh, this Republicans. Republican. I'm going to drink, yeah, tab or something. Exactly right. But they also gave a million dollars to the Dems, right? So the Dems are going to say, How could you give a million dollars to these people who want to stop a woman's right to choose? Right. And Dr. Pepper's like, I just want to sell cola. Yeah. I don't get, they just let me sell cola better. It's not about abortion. Right. But they're going to be like, no, you don't believe in abortion, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You're not an abortion doctor or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, so, so, and then if they give the money, so he's like, all right, fine, I give the money to Democrats. Now you got all the Republicans like, you want to kill babies, yeah. Dr. Pepper. You want to kill them until they're up to two years old. They're up to two. That's the latest ruling I heard. You can kill them until they're up to two. That's nuts, dude. Yeah. That's the nuts. year after pill. It's like, what <laughs> the <laughs> fuck is going on? When does it end? When does it end? The seven year after dude, pill. How well behaved on a plane, though. Oh, dude. Dude, like you, you break out a couple of those kid. in the fucking hand. How old's the kid? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a lot of crying on this flight. 
for 16 months. Um, yeah, so maybe that is it. Yeah, I, I, I think I don't know enough in that in that in the larger landscape politically to know. But yeah, it would just seem to me like then that way companies wouldn't you know, it would just start to affect, like, even, like, in Hollywood, like, cele- you know, celebrities, they wouldn't all be like, okay, well, let's do this or let's do that, or just telling people how to vote or whatever, Absolutely. you know? It's all bullshit. Yeah. You see through it because you've been in the other side. Yeah. So, like, it's all, everybody's full of shit. They're just, you know, helping their bottom line or they're trying to, like, get an- another job acting. Like, most of these actresses and, and actors that, like, come out politically super hard, they just want the they next just role. just want to survive, yeah. What's the next role? I know if I say this shit, then I'm going to look woke, and then this director is going to hire me because you want to hire someone woke. It's all hustle. None of them give a fuck. Yeah. I promise you none of them give It's like, It's like the reason the It's R all Kelly advertising. Shit, it's all advertising. Like the, the R. Kelly shit is coming out again now because he's broke, so he can't pay people off. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like- Imagine how, how stressful that must have been, though. Just juggling all the pedophilia stuff, you know? <laughs> Just bussing around the fucking, warming the urine constantly and bussing it around, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> he didn't like to produce new urine, oh, he liked no. an aged Oh, I bet, I'm urine. sure he did. He Absolutely. seems like a guy that likes an aged urine. Nice aged urine. Oh, yeah. that's dark, isn't it? Yeah, but it is what it is. It is funny, though. It is funny. Dude, yeah, uh, it's, uh. Yeah, I just want to be free also to say what I want to say. Like last night on the stage, Joey Diaz had a stage that a joke that had a bunch of racial slurs in it, right? Yeah. Ones that we would n- all not even probably say on this podcast except you because you work with a lot of black people. You might be willing to drop Oh, one. I don't do the N-word. Huh? I don't do the N-word. Oh, I don't do it, dude, unless you do. You know what I'm saying, bro? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just joking, man. I mean, I quit doing it probably about four years ago when everybody else did. Really? Yeah. You got off? I mean, yeah. 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 I was like, uh, I like how you quit porn after. <laughs> this train, <laughs> this train is going nowhere. This is one of my favorite videos ever. Um, by the fucking the the Jewish queen of comedy right here, Miss Joan Rivers. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Getting bald. Let me tell you, everybody, just relax. Everybody is either a wop, a nigger, a kike, a chink, a, a, a fairy, a, a, a myth. Uh, everybody's something, so why don't we all just calm down? Amen. We should be thankful for you. Be thankful that we're all living in America and stop everybody getting so damn uptight. Absolutely. And this goes for the Indians, both Dot and Feather. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. She included both of them, Feather at the end. Shout out Feather. Shout out Feather for real. Um, who there's not even that many of. There really aren't. They're and gone they don't there. care. Few care. I don't even know. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it is. I don't know. I really don't know. But yeah, not I mean, the casinos. I, I do you feel like that things are better off than the media makes them seem to be? Yeah, dude, that's just like. I the, feel like I'm asking you all the questions that like I have questions too, and you're like, "How the fuck do you still have these questions?" No, no, I'm not. <laughs> and knocking, it's okay. It's good. I'm not actually. knocking your question. I'm saying like I could. I assume you're asking me this question because you already feel a way about it. You already feel like yeah, people but I get, overreact. Oh so yeah, I'm not knocking your question i'm agreeing with your sentiment that i'm assuming you have yeah right so like the jesse smollett situation is a perfect example it's like when we found out it was fake right people went but things like this happen every day no, no they, they don't. don't that's what i say <laughs> they never happen yeah they, and people were literally tweeting they're like there are lynchings every day where? Where? Yeah. Somebody told me that there's still slaves in South Carolina, someone told me. Like, are you fucking crazy? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) No, no, no. no. Yeah, dude. No, no, no. But it's only because, yeah, people, maybe somebody that's hard of hearing (laughs) and is fucking committed to their job. (laughs) I mean, but nobody's just like signing up anymore. Just a bunch of guys like, what's emancipation yeah, mean? Yeah. I don't know what that yeah. means. They really chose the biggest word yeah, to say you're they free. They really did. And they did it on purpose. Oh, they they're, like, they're not going to know what this did. means. We can get a few yeah, years we're after. We're going to fucking slip a <laughs> couple Two or three more years. years. What are you going to do me? <laughs> emancipation, nuh uh. I'm not. Proclamation. Doing it. Oh. They just kept using bigger and bigger words. That's so true, huh? Dude, that's a tricky move. It is a tricky move. That was man. Lincoln's deal. He's like, all right, we'll just use some words yeah, a little bit too uh, big. It'll make everybody okay. <laughs> we can kind of play both sides of the net here with this. Yeah. But um, I agree with you, dude. Like the world, and of course, everybody will think, oh, it's two white guys saying this. No, no, no. But like the world is But way I don't think so. Better. I would speak up for a black. I would, I, 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 my, I know that in my heart, I, I want things to be fair, you know? Yeah. And I know I've always wanted that. I mean, I've always, you know, like, 
I believe more in green privilege these days than I do in white privilege. What's that mean? You know, just money. Like, I don't think Jaden Smith has a tough time finding fucking work. A thousand percent. You know what percent. I'm saying? I, like, I agree. That kid ain't waking percent. up. Yeah. worrying about fucking work absolutely like donnell rollins was on here talking about how like it's just you know we're past the time of excuses you know like yes where fortunately we are yeah. and i think a lot of people recognize you know that black people had a did not certainly did not get any head start at all no. you know and we're set back for sure yeah and that you know you still have to deal with a lot of those things but it also the excuse culture of people just just enables you yeah and there's people break there's like and and there's just people bringing down a lot like people are over like the bottom feeders who are just trying to bring down their culture and i think even in the black community you're starting to see them be trying like trying to weed them out yeah get Beat the fuck it, out of here like if you're still using these old excuses like you're not helping us because it doesn't help yeah people want to move forward yeah it's like who are you hiring like all those people that are making those excuses are you hiring anybody yeah are you putting money no. in anybody's pocket are you doing anything all you're doing is playing off of people's fear yeah ah so you're no different than a politician yeah that you might hate and right? ownership, dude, when you talk about ownership, if you want to talk about still owning, the only people that still owns anyone these days is networks and, yeah. you know, and owns like the likeness of out. people. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like my buddy told me he was being sued for a picture of his face. Yeah. Like someone took a picture of his face and he used it on something and they were like, oh, that's my picture. It's like, that's my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, are you fucking nuts, buddy? I grew that picture. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Like, you just hit a button. Yeah. This is mine. I have There's to wash that picture every night. Every every night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, anyway. Every other night, but, maybe. But yeah, I think you make a... Oh, man, you said you said something really... What was it just right before? I want to address it. Ah, whatever. Fuck it. But um, it was really good. Oh, uh... The, the, excuse culture? No. Green privilege? Oh, yeah, no, the excuse thing is really interesting. It's like... Uh, because you know what it's like? It's like, uh, let's say you have lung cancer, right? And you go to the doctor, right? And, um, the doctor goes, okay, you got lung cancer. Um, and you're like, and the doctor says, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you on these antibiotics and you're going to stop smoking and you're going to do all these dude, things. That's exactly my whole week, dude. I'm on a uh, Z pack right now and I'm on my fourth day of no smoking. Boom. Right now. Jesus, dude, you're like a damn soothsayer. God damn. <laughs> so what if, what if the, the patient was like. Well, why don't we talk about what gave me lung cancer? And you're the doctor like, no, no, I'm trying to cure you of lung cancer. I'm yeah. trying to make your lungs better. But the patient kept going, no, 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 no. The cigarettes. Yeah. Why didn't, why were you forcing me to smoke cigarettes? Why? And it's like, okay, we can talk about this all you want. But if you want to not have cancer, yeah, this is what you got to do. Right. And it's not talking about the cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That literally does nothing yeah. to stop cancer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, at a certain point, we all, we just, you know, and I guess it is easier to say from a white perspective, but I don't know, when you come from a poor perspective, it just seems like, I don't know, I always felt like rich people thought, felt like poor white people were like a pariah to them. I don't know what a pariah means, but yeah, it was do. like, I'm not fucking with that dude. That guy's going to fuck my money up. There's this idea that know? like all white people are the same and to non-whites, they see us like that. Yeah. But there is... A upper class of whites that wants nothing to do with any of us in this yeah. room right now, and I've operated in those circles, and yeah. it is very clear. Yeah, it is like that. That's that one percent shit that exists. Oh, that's a dark arts, dude. It, it is. That's people doing really, yeah, drinking each other's blood, doing stuff on the internet. What was that guy's question again? Uh, was he crazy north place. south difference? Oh yeah, difference between north south. I mean, look, I love. I'll be honest with you, I love. Uh, I love the South, man, and I, I definitely came from that like bigoted New York thing. Like, I didn't even like country music without listening to it. That stupid shit people say. Oh, like old music, sub country, whatever. And then I started listening to country, and um, it is country music is like the male country. Females too violent, but ma <laughs> but male. But yeah, Shania Twain, stomp, stomp, dude. Dixie Chicks are poisoning. Crime. They're poisoning. Yeah, they're dudes. Every. Yeah. This is Who do you think cut off Gary Sinise's legs for that movie? S uh, Carrie Underwood. Probably. Is that true? There's all Could types be. of shit out there. God point, bless Gary. God bless him. But point is like the country music for me it's like very Buddhist. It's just like accept what you have. Yeah. I like my dog, I like a beer, I like a nice day. Yeah. I like my car. I, and it's not even that nice. It's just a truck, but I like it. Hey, I love the simple thing. I love my wife. I right. lo it's literal Buddhism. Every song, never about anything fancy. It's yeah. just, what a, I love my porch. 
Yeah. I love sitting on, I love a beautiful, nice beer on my porch. Like, yeah. so simple. How, how could you hate it? I don't understand how you could hate it. I don't know. Well, do you listen to country? Maybe you don't oh, even yeah. listen. No, I love country. Who's music. your guys? <clears throat> Let me see. Alan Jackson. I like uh, Lee Bryce. I like, um, uh, I don't mind Alan Jackson, actually. That's like old. That's yeah, like that's old, old school. school, yeah. But I grew up on like Garth Brooks. I grew up being erect and fucking, you know, dancing to that shit. Mm -hmm. I would even get erect during the ones that weren't even slow songs, and that was a, that's when I knew I was different. It's the power of Garth. You know? It was like, damn, dude. Yeah, he got, but, he got yeah. it. Yeah. This is fucking a lot, you know? Chris Stapleton's the best out right now. Chris Stapleton, yeah. he's the guy? He, I'm not like super... Yeah. I'm like hacky so, like country music. I like like Rascal Flats. Yeah. It's good to me. He performed you know? at the Grammys like last year, but he used to like produce like Eric Church and some of the big names you already know. And he's he started the guy. doing his solo shit. He's, he's the real deal. He's the guy. Yeah, yeah. He was on Joe Rogan. He had a really neat interview on there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think who else I like. Uh, you know, I like Lady Annabellum. Um... I like. I mean, I like. I just like listening to country music. I guess I don't even know a lot of who some of the new artists are, but I listen to country music in my car all the time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, but that's interesting that it's like Buddhism. What other questions do we have in, in here, guys? That's pretty much it. The other ones were like asking him about his his new special he's got coming up, or when's he going to release a special? He told us that, and then something about independent content, in which I feel like this was the sole. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, it's definitely interesting, man. You know, it's yeah, it's like weird. Like I feel like I had like I don't know if I had fears or anything. It's just interesting to to get validation um, from a different perspective, from a different city, and someone who's struggled in that it, within that industry, and then to have also found their own footing in that industry and being inspiring other people. Um, but I see you doing it. Yeah, maybe it's just the gram, but like when I see you on the gram and I see you selling out shows and I see the podcast blowing up, like for me, I don't know. Like for me, that's all the validation I need. You know what I mean? Actually, all the validation I need is just creating, but the anything is extra. So in my mind, I'm like, yo, you're living a dream. Yeah, like literally, that's how I feel. But so yeah. But that's just me. Maybe there's other things that you want. Maybe I know you really want to give back, and maybe you'll really feel like once you give back that you're doing exactly. Yeah, maybe that. I'll feel better then. You know. Yeah, I get, there is something that I, I just don't feel okay sometimes. Or I don't feel like we're doing enough. You what? Know, like, that's a survivor's guilt or something like that. Yeah, it's like you've been in that dark ass place, and you're like, if I could only help more people. Yeah, I always feel like we should be doing, you know, more doing something else why? or doing. I don't know why. It's so funny. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like. You know, when will I just kind of like be like, okay, what we're doing right now is is it is hard for you okay. to accept success? Um, I don't know. Like when you make, what do you think, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, it's, it's, he's got this constant fear it'll go away for some reason, and yeah. it's like I think I just don't trust this industry so much, and this, you know, I had this fear of it or something. But you're outside of them now. Yeah. Now it's you're your own people, and that was what it is, and like if it goes away which I don't believe it will because your connection is intimate with these people. Yeah. Like they really love you because... Yeah, we have a lot of good people that come out, you know? And a lot of people that are, yeah, just regular people that just want to be... They just feel connected to you, man. Yeah. You create a community. It's like, that's really... You know, I mean, that's another level of things. We could talk about that too, but like, f I don't know, just seeing that kind of intimacy, even if it goes away, let's say it goes away, you've built it from zero. Yeah. You've been here before. There's no fear now because you know how to build it again. Right. It's like Elon Musk is like, yeah, I've lost a billion dollars before, but that's okay. And it's not because he's a billionaire. It's because he's built it already. Like, you know, you're in the ecosystem, bro. Yeah. Like, there's a reason I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this podcast because right. you're in it. Yeah, no, I was the definitely excited The seeds are in there. I, like, I, I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be dope, man. You're in good. it. You're in the fucking ecos. Maybe you don't even realize that you're in it. Maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe something like that. And sometimes it's easier for other people to have outside perspective. But I guess I feel like I start to feel like, well, if I'm given the opportunity to have success, then I have to also have, you know, the opportunity. Like at the same time, I need to be able to. I guess just do more stuff with it, you know? You didn't, weren't given the opportunity. You took it. Right. You don't get handed power. You take power. Yeah. Physically, you take it. 
Now that could be by building a studio, getting people who believe in you and building a team and coming at three times a week to record these episodes, sacrificing your friendships, girlfriends, family, like, but you take it. And then people who are worthy of having power, the last thing they take is power, right? A, real, a king who takes power, all he does after that is give. Mm. How do I protect my people? How do I nurture my people? How do I take care of my people? And then he has some bratty son who fucks the whole thing up. Yeah. But that, that's Gianni. That might be Gianni, bro. Oh, he has a shirt on that says power right now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and it's written dude, in white. And it's this is in white. metaphorical, man. This is wild. And he was a C-section baby, were you? No. Oh, yeah, that would have right. been perfect. But, no, it would be perfect. Fuck, but but yeah, so you're in that stage. You're like, oh shit, I finally have some like, I finally have some power. Power is a loose term, but like I finally have some power. It's like, how can I give back to these people? And I see you do the thing with the single moms. Yeah. Right? It's like, I we, have yeah, some. We do some cool stuff and we want to do more of it. Yeah, I guess. And you I, will. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Yeah, some of it's just this weird impatience that I feel like we have to figure it all out now. Or... But there's not enough that like, you. I think what you're doing is like, this is what smart people do is like they create goals that they can't achieve because they uh, realize how important a goal is for themselves. Like Whitney does this. And she's so smart. I don't even think she realizes she does it, but like she needs something to do every yeah. second of the day. Yeah, I've seen her Instagram story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. I've seen everything she does. Yeah. I mean, I never have met anybody who's like petting horses, fucking putting on makeup, going to the fucking dance, going to this, Cinderella, midnight ball, midnight <laughs> snack, fucking, I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> and uh, and she'll still love me after that. So, but, but yeah. But why, why is it? It's like, she needs yeah, something she, she, that she doesn't like she end. Have nothing. You have the no. nice pool. We saw the fucking pool. Mm -mm. Don't pretend like it's not yours. She never says I'm in my pool. She's like, oh, I'm in this pool. In the pool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your pool has a little island on the edge of it. <laughs> Dude, um, from one end of her pool, you can almost see Russia. That's what I heard. <laughs> but it's like, she's what she did is just created a goal that can never be accomplished, which is saving the animals. Right. <laughs> Oh, right? yeah. So it's like, you'll never be able to save all the animals, but at least you have something to do until you're dead. Yeah, that's a good point. She tried to save that one hot giraffe, and that was a big issue. That's it, that? dude. That was a that dude, was He didn't backfire. even look that bad off. He, he fucking was looked taller like, than the fire. Dude, First he's all, in Malibu. If anybody should have seen it coming. Yeah. I know, right? Like, what a call. stupid giraffe. Like, <laughs> tell the other animals, beat it, buddy. <laughs> you can't walk over yeah. that gate. Like, you're yeah. a giraffe. <laughs> you got to let the Lord work sometimes, Whitney, you know? <laughs> so helping people is your helping animals yeah and you're like shit i gotta keep on doing more of it and you will yeah but no amount of it will satisfy you right like you'll always feel like there should be more and maybe you eventually maybe you'd get to a like a really cool place where um y you just love the helping not the amount right right so it doesn't matter how many oh, views yeah. the video gets it doesn't matter how much money you get for the special the joy was the help the act of helping it becomes like that joke the two seconds or three seconds in the joke where you're in a different world it's like yeah. every time you're helping you're in the different world and it's like you know what i helped i helped one person this month how fucking awesome and fun was that yeah not i only helped one person yeah yeah it's funny man i think yeah i think i'd love to be able to fine tune me feeling good about just my own life more over time you know seems like you're doing it like it seems like there's a yeah. lot of growth for you in the last maybe decade yeah, I think, that, oh yeah, there definitely has been, I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm def, you know, I, uh, yeah, I think so. And it, it's, you know, going to these shows and seeing people that are just coming out and having a good time and like, you know, a lot of my audience is very loving people that come out. Like, cause you give that. Yeah. Yeah. You man. give that. Yeah. You give bro. You give. That's rare. You're a comedian. Yeah. Usually we take, we're empty. Phil laughs. Phil, 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 Phil. You. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. You get filled through giving. This is like some Burning Man shit. You should come to Burning Man with me. Really? I learned that shit. You go shit. to Burning Man? Yeah, yeah. When the Whoa. last few years, yeah. We should do a show there. Dude, let's do. No, that's one of the things I want to give. The whole thing there is about giving. Radical gifting. How much drugs do you have to do to do it? You know what? I think this year I'm not going to do any. Wow. I'm not a big drug guy. Yeah. And I think that like. I might take Adderall just to stay awake. Oh, yeah. Because it's like you don't really sleep that well. You're in the fucking desert in an RV, the whole thing. But like I learned from there like the, the value of giving, like how fulfilling that shit can be. Like yeah. really help just just giving someone something. Yeah. How fucking good that can make you feel. Oh, yeah. 
It's like, I come from New York, which is a taker city. It's like, how can I fuck you over? How can I swindle you? How can I get you? And the second I Swindler's start, List, bro. You Swindler's seen that movie? List, bro. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Manhattan. Dude, Manhattan, New York, bro. Tell me this about New York. Let's be honest. Alphabet Go. City, the only place you can even get. You can't even get mugged in fucking New York anymore. How sad is that, bro? I know. You can't even get fucking stabbed unless you fucking, you know, fall into a silverware dealer down in Alphabet City. <laughs> yeah, it's all about That's Alphabet City. That's the only place. Bro, everything else is so fucking expensive. Dude, it's so expensive. It's so crazy. It's so nice. You got to go far to be in trouble. Yeah. You got to go really far. And that's changed, man. Back, I remember when I first went there, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I ended up in a cab in a threesome with fucking some of the guys from O-Town. No. You know? Yeah. Which dude. one? Oh, I don't the remember. Black? Who knows? He looked black. There was know? the black guy from O-Town. It was dark. Uh, who knows yeah 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 i like a girl with something oh dude i used to cry at the gym listening to the <laughs> oh yeah candy dreams yeah <laughs> that was my shit my liquid dreams <laughs> liquid dreams dude, liquid dreams yeah. town was a shit bro my uh yeah i can't remember what it was um any other questions any with questions? janet jackson's thighs uh, or something janet like jackson style do you have any Style. plans to come to LA or are you going to stay in New York? Yeah, uh, let's fucking tell it, tell it, make no. the big announcement. Yeah, <laughs> I'm staying in New York. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm here just because I'm doing shows and I want to connect with everybody out here. I felt like something really bubbling out here, especially in the podcast world and like even in the stand up world. I just wanted Did to. Did you feel pretty welcomed by everybody? I haven't really even been, I haven't done shows really. You know, I've just been running around to, but um, in, in the podcast, absolutely, man. Everybody's been cool and I'm excited to do the shows. You know, I got two, uh, we're taping this on Wednesday, so I got two tomorrow. Nice. But, um, but yeah, man, it, it was just like, there was something happening here. I just wanted to like feel it. It was, it's exciting. Yeah. And I just wanted to like, just feel it. But I'm, I'm going to go wherever the career is for me. And right now the career is everything I'm creating is in New York. You know, I live in New York and, uh, you know, the podcast I'm doing and everything in New York, but, uh, I'm not locked to a certain place, but I don't have any plans to come. I just like, I just, I just really liked what you guys were doing out here, man. I was drawn to it and I needed to fucking, I just needed to go and, and just feel it. I think it, I think it was probably inspirational. Mm. Yeah, I think that was it for me. It was just like, yeah, this is. I need a little. Yeah, where do you go when you need to be inspired, or you need? Uh, it, it will give me energy. It gave yeah. me energy coming out here. Like seeing the studio gives me energy. Right. This, just kind of seeing what happens, see what's going on, see Fighter and the Kid. I remember, yeah, I went on Fighter and the Kid, and that's when I first started meeting some of those, you know, different podcast people. Um, and I, yeah, and then. You know, I think Nick just emailed me blindly about because I had talked on the podcast about needing a producer. Well, we we had I'd done a little for allegedly when I was. Oh yeah, that's right. Before I got laid off. I had a previous podcast, yeah, (laughs) and uh, and it had tons of celebrity guests on, but it just didn't pick up any viewership. Why do you think that was? I don't know. And we were on Wendy Williams. We're on Page Six all the time. Like we had so much press, but I think it just didn't have any. It didn't have any substance at the end. Yeah, I could never say what I wanted to say, whether it was good or bad. You you couldn't be you. Right. And sometimes I still have gotten a little scared over the past months to be me, but now I think I'm getting a little bit back more comfortable to Why? it. Some of just an adjustment period, things like just getting so busy, like yeah. just not knowing what to do and just being like, you know, like I don't like being sometimes out of my comfort zone, even if that's a, even if it's a good place that I'm in. Right. It's still out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't resonate with me any differently, whether it's a scary place or a good place, it's still out of my comfort zone. And so for me, it just takes some acclimation a lot of times, you know? Yeah. There's um, a, and also just success can be something that's scary because. Yeah. Especially if you never, you know, you always looked, you know, you always had a chip on your shoulder against that, you know, like, cause they, you know, like, oh, I can't have that, you know, like I don't, that's not for me. That's for other people. It's like it gave you that underdog thing, you know? Yeah. But that's what people root for, man. But then when that's gone. What's your motivation? You What's your motivation? Be, but also, you don't want people to think you don't want to become the thing that you hate. Yeah, yeah. Like Fifty Cent is looking for people to beef with every day because he knows yeah. that's the motor, right? Or like uh, Bernard Hopkins. I don't know if you're a boxing fan, but like he's from Philadelphia. Isn't he's he? Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The execution, right? So like he needs to be the villain in the in the card. And when we were rooting for him, it just didn't work. He didn't know how to sell it. He yeah. didn't know how to be the what is it in wrestling? The, oh, the heel. No, the heel is the bad the baby guy, face. right? The baby, baby face. face is that the good guy the face yeah the face right mm-hmm. yeah so it's like he just knew how to only be the heel mm. and and yeah i guess i like grew from that despicable me <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> yeah man 
it's a it's a weird thing, man. But it seems like you you're doing. I don't know, man. It seems like you're doing maybe better than you give yourself credit for. Yeah. It seems like the people around you keep telling you that, but you're not realizing it. But then not realizing it might be your motivation. So yeah, maybe it's good to have a little skepticism. Yeah, I'll take all the skepticism I can get. I think, man. You know, I'm pretty skeptical of me, bro. Good. You know, I think so anyway. But it we'll drives see. you. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. I think it must, man. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes I don't exactly know what drives me, really, you know, in some ways. Or maybe I do. I don't know. You know, I don't really know, to be fully honest with you, man. Maybe, maybe you do know. But it's exciting. Uh, yeah, I definitely feel excited. I definitely, yeah, it's it's definitely been totally different just having people come out after like 15 years of doing shows and people finally come out. It's just, you know, it's different. And my thing is I've just been like, I want everything to be okay. It's like when somebody comes over to your house. Yeah. Like even when the cops are coming over and you hear they're coming, you want to fucking clean up. First, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, that's kind of how I feel. Like people are coming over, you know, let's fucking make sure all like the fucking candles are lit. And yeah. Stuff, you it's know? like, you don't want to try new material. It's like, no, I want to kill for these guys. Yeah. I want to justify them showing me love when no one else ever did. Yeah. Right. I want to show them. Yeah. I want to make them feel good. But at the same time, like they'll ride with you even during the growth. Yeah, and that's what a lot of them say, you know. And so I think uh, I think some of it will be, you know, I'll get more settled in, and you know, and start to take, you know, larger confidence in some of the other maybe m- moves we might make to expand and do different things and employ friends and work with friends Hell and that kind yeah. of thing, you know, and just maybe have more confidence in in what we've already created, you know. I think that's maybe that's why you're here today too to to hear this, you know, to get it from somebody that I'm just, you know, that I was inspired to like talk to and that everybody's excited about and um you know, and yeah, you seem to definitely have a little bit more of that reverb of 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 kind of like uh work confidence, yeah. you know, that I don't know if it eludes me, but it just, you know, I feel like sometimes I'm in different in other people's waters and you know, there's still this thing that I'm not allowed in there, or they don't want me in there, sure. so, you know. That makes so, perfect, and we all feel that. Yeah, that like I'm not good enough. You really need to come to Burning Man. Yeah, there's this principle in Burning Man. It's radical uh, inclusion, and it's a weird thing that happens. Like when you're included everywhere, no matter what, no matter how you dress, no matter how you look, no matter anything. For the first day, it's a little weird. Second day, it's a little weird, and then the third day. This weird things happen. This weird thing happens where like that voice in your head that says I'm not good enough starts to get real quiet because you're included in every conversation. You can walk up to anybody and mm. just start talking, and they'll be like, "Hey, man, well, how was your day?" And when that fucking happens, that's a drug. Yeah. And then you start connecting with people in this real deep way because you're not constantly trying to present an image that you think people will. Oh accept. yeah. So you could probably get to really exhale then. You're like, oh, this fucking suit of armor that I've been holding on. Holding on. You're like, oh, I can set this over here in the dirt. Yeah. You know, that's interesting, man. You yeah. got to pull up, man. Come through. I like that, man. I'll have to. I got to come to New York City too, man. Anytime I got you. Yeah. Andrew Soltz, thank you so much for My coming brother, in, bro. thank you so much for having me. This was great. Gang, man. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this piece of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself on my 